No, I'm not actually Jack, so I'm going to defer it to Craig the Sign Guy with Here's Your Sign. Dave, I liked your message. Uh, if you just stick around here for a few more minutes, I have a sign for you. <laughs> and I think you'll like it, too. So, uh, for some of the new people here, uh, just a little background. The way I got into this is I watched C-SPAN for 14 hours when they debated Obamacare. And I got so angry, I just about threw the television <laughs> off the third floor of our, of our house. And Janice says, you should put that to some creative use. You should do something. And so I said, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make the biggest sign and put it on Glen Road in Woodbury that I can make. And I put up a sign that was four foot by 12 foot tall. And the next week, I got a letter from Woodbury City Council that I violated the Woodbury City sign code. And Janice says, what are you going to do now, smart guy? And I said, I am going to make sign every single week until Obama is gone. And I am now on sign 177, and I think I have about another 170 or 80 signs to go. Uh, so Jake titled this, Here's Your Sign, and I didn't understand what that meant until I looked on YouTube at the comedian uh, Bill Engel. <laughs> and uh, so if, if you saw the news coming out of New York City that, and you're cheering that the big gulp is no longer illegal and now liberated, I have a sign for you. <laughs> if you think that a poster of Nancy Pelosi above your bed might be a good birth control method, I have a sign for you. <laughs> and Dave, this is, this is for you. If you think that Popeye Governor Dayton in the next election should change his name to Target, I have a sign for you. <laughs> so these, um, these are the, the signs from August. So there was, uh, there's five signs from August. This is about health care. So Max Bacchus came out and said, Obamacare is a train wreck. Uh, the, the employer mandate was delayed by one year. The three very powerful unions want out of Obamacare. 77% 77, 77 of the voters want to see the individual mandate scrapped or delayed. And in my email that went with this, I predicted they're going to blame the Republicans. And sure enough, even this week, they're talking about how the Republicans are to blame. And what I recommended is maybe you should call this Bush care. You know, the liberals might think it's like a personal hygiene program or something. Like that. <laughs> that was very close to the edge, I know. <laughs> so, uh, somebody mentioned Keith Ellison. Uh, Stephanie mentioned Keith Ellison. Uh, and his exact quote was, the bottom line is we're not broke. There's plenty of money, it's just that the government doesn't have it. <laughs> now how do you like that socialist attitude? And what he wants to include is a inclusive property tax on all stocks and bond tracks, uh, transactions to generate more revenue. So I matched up uh, Keith Ellison with Harry Reid because uh, Harry Reid, when, when he was asked about tax reform, the Wall Street Journal article quoted him, read to tax reform, drop dead. Now that's a very open attitude. So that was about the evil <laughs> twins of Keith Ellison and Harry Reid. Um, so on July 5th, you ever notice that really big things happen like Friday at 5 o'clock or during a holiday weekend? So on July 5th, the individual reporting of salary to qualify for Obamacare on, on, is going to be on an honor system and will not be verified. So you can put whatever ever you want on your forms and it will not be ver verified. And Nancy Pelosi said that she feared there would be a brain drain 
from Washington, D.C. If, if Congress's Cadillac plans were not renewed. Now, I find that very humorous, a brain drain from Washington, D.C. So prior to their five-week uh, August vacation, there was an executive agreement of adding subsidies of $5,000 to $11,000 per person to keep their Cadillac plans. So either they're too good for Obamacare or the law is that bad, and I think both are true. Sign number four, our system. Moochers vote for looters to steal from producers. So those terms are actually out of uh, Ayn Rand's novel, Atlas Shrugged and uh, the Fountain Pet. Oh, you don't have it? Um, well, that was the sign. Um, PowerPoint guy. Yeah, I'm the PowerPoint guy. I, I did about, you know, 100,000 of them, I think. Um, so that was uh, the, the sign for week number four. So we'll skip that one. This is this week's sign. So if King George had the NSA spy system, America wouldn't exist. And if you really pay attention to what's going on, everybody in this room should just be outraged about what's going on with the NSA. And it's much, much broader than that. Uh, in the email that, uh, that I sent out, um, you know, NSA is tracking 75% of all uh, phone calls and emails. And uh, Senator Udall came out and he says, there is nothing to prevent any analyst from the NSA at looking at the content of your emails. And as a matter of fact, in the Wall Street Journal, uh, they talked about NSA analysts tracking their lovers that suspected were cheating on them. They're using the NSA system. But it's broader than that. So if you take a look at the post office, the post office can track every single piece of mail and every package and the to and from. Obamacare will have all of our health records. You know, look at the extent of the records that IRS has right now. Uh, license plate trackers are now in 75% of the cities. So if you see cameras on the bridges, uh, police cars have license plate trackers. Uh, and traffic cams can track license plates. In the United Kingdom, it has evolved where they can tell almost where any car is in real time within the, within the country of the United Kingdom. Um, and I don't know if you caught this, but in Dodd-Frank, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau is organized in the Federal Reserve, a private entity. So they will have access to all uh, potentially uh, to credit card information, ATM information, which they're in charge to regulate. The data center that has been put in Utah, and there was a special on 60 Minutes about the data center, that data center has the memory of 1,000 iPhones for every citizen of America. That is the capacity of that data center that went into Utah. Um, and if we, if we lose, um, you know, the right to privacy, we will lose the freedom of speech and people will self-censor. Censor. So those are the signs uh, for the month. If you have, uh, have great ideas, uh, send me an email. Uh, Janice has a, a sign up for uh, my sign list, if you just pass that around. I know a lot of people are signed up already. And the last one, I think, is my recommended book. And I just, uh, I just read uh, Mark Levine's uh, The Liberty Amendments. I just finished it last week. And it really gave me hope that maybe there's another way to begin to change government through state amendments. And, uh, and I know that book uh, right now is on a number of bestseller lists. And it's, it's really important to, to take a look at, uh, at that avenue. Uh, Atlas Shrugged, written in 1957 by Ayn Rand. President Obama has done a great job in selling guns and ammunition. He also did a great job selling Atlas Shrugged. There's been two million copies of Atlas Shrugged sold since he's been in office, which is unheard of 
<laughs> for a book that's 50 years old. Hamilton's Curse. Um, so this is a book about how Hamilton, who was a big government guy, big bank guy, power of the executive branch, ended up trumping all of Jefferson's ideas. And I just gave this, uh, this book to, to Dave uh, to read here. And I'll be interested in his impression. Uh, the Ominous Parallels. Um, I read this book three times now. It's about the end of freedom in America, written by a guy by the name of Leonard Peikoff. And what, he, what his premise of the book is, and he wrote this for his PhD thesis in philosophy, was how did Hitler ever happen? How could a culture evolve that Hitler could happen in a culture? And he draws uh, the, the 100 years prior to the Weimar Republic and makes analogies to what's going on in America and Western uh, civilization these days. And the last one, if you want to defend capitalism, if you want to defend the morality of making money, it's the capitalism, the unknown ideal by Ayn Rand. Uh, so those are my five uh, um, recommended books. And Jake talked about uh, a contest. So here is, uh, here is the contest. So if anybody in here reads 10 of the 15 books on the three lists, I will give $100 trillion in Zimbabwe dollars <laughs> or an ounce of silver to whoever uh, reads those books. And Zimbabwe dollars really exist. So here is a $100 trillion note. I tried to cash it in at the bank and for an exchange. They wouldn't accept it, but I think it's worth about $5. So we will uh, publish that list and, uh, and probably have a handout. It'll be published on, on Facebook. Uh, yes? Is that Liberty Amendment book a takeoff of Wilson Fisk's book? Yeah. 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 Yeah.